Welcome to an overview of application components, services, service instances, software components, and business applications in Device 42. These are a lot of different configuration items that Device 42 will make available to convey different information in different uses, but there is a lot of overlap between them. So this is to highlight when you would use these different objects and what their functionality is. So I'm going to start to show this from a discovered device and how those pieces start to tie in from the device level first. And then we'll talk about the apps menu where all those different objects exist individually and what their role is. So I'm pulling up my Linux device here, which is going to have a few of these different components and not all of them exist here, but most do. So anytime you navigate to a device, it's particularly been discovered with the hypervisors Nix Windows based discovery and is really logging into the underlying guest OS, it's going to have most of this information available. So first to start is applications and this applications tab is going to have relatively limited data from this device view and just by running discovery, there should never be any data here. This ties to our business application and business applications, as I show later, is going to be defined by user interventions. So a user is actually creating these business applications and groups and tying them to a device. So as we see here, we have payroll, CRM app, migration wave one. These are different groups that this device has been added to. And I'll be showing that later. We then have software. And software from a device view shows all of the installed software inventory and packages and versions and patches that exist on that device. So I can see everything that is installed on this system and the version when we found it, if we found it in the last discovery with the last updated flag. I could also click on any of these, I'll open that in a new tab, and this is going to bring me to that software component view. So now I'm actually looking at that software. So this is for our chef agent that we deploy. We discovered a count of 24 instances of that. This discovered count on the software component is going to change based upon the license model that's calculated. So by default, any of these are counted by an individual device basis. We see at one time it's a count of one, but there are factors for core CPU and it's going to consider the discovered count based upon those license model calculations. We've actually found a few other packages that we've merged as an alias. So there's a few other aliases for that chef agent and version that we show here. Then in software and use, these are the individual installations where we found that software. So if I go back to the top, we have chef. That's that software package name. Then we have software in use, and this is the unique installations for that agent. So we have chef version 1503 on this particular device and the other devices that they're on. And we can see quite a few here. So an important note to consider on software is it has two factors. Software component, that's the top level. Then software in use is our actual installation and they're gonna have unique version host, maybe even user and license information for that. And that's what we're actually counting. So again, software component is our top level for that unique software name. Then software in use is gonna be each individual installation of that given software. Going then to application components, this is really going to look at discovered applications that Device 42 supports in the discovery. You can create these manually, but typically these are going to be added automatically through various discoveries, primarily Windows, Linux, Unix discovery, where we are looking for MS SQL, Oracle, Postgres, Apache, IIS, about 15 common applications. And these are going to have different information. Of course, we're going to find the application name and the host that it's on. So if we need to quickly identify where do we have Microsoft SQL deploy, I can search by that and see all of the different instances that we found. And I'll go ahead and pull that up. And in the discovery, which I talk about in the advanced discovery overview, we have the options of pulling a different config information, and that may be available here. In this case, this is an MS SQL instance we actually have the database instances of that where we pull them through our database discovery. So on be useful for aligning different business elements to that particular application component. Now, this kind of goes hand in hand with business applications, although they are separate objects today and there's not much relationship right now where business applications gives additional visualization on top of this. But 
application components could potentially be used to document those application and business services if you wanted to, considering they do have those fields. But primarily, they're going to be used for discovering what common applications exist and what servers they're on with some different config information, including the services. So in this case, SQL has these two different service instances, and these are the path and the state that they're running on and user context they run on. In this case, if it's Oracle MS SQL, it should also have database instances related to that particular application component. So we have more detailed information around that particular database. We'll also tie together any software package and software versioning information that may have been discovered alongside the application component installation. Now business applications. So I talked briefly that these are tied on the device view, but this is where you would go to create them. So here, these are strictly really used for visualizations and diagramming business services. They don't have any fields tied to them directly. However, we can report on and query devices and objects that have been related to a business application. I'm going to go ahead and add a new one. So I'll say that we are creating a application here. I'm just going to call this our 42 application. And this application is going to include a few different devices. I can search by any device that I want to include in that. So I'll say this has a MySQL host and I'll search by that and get a list that match that name. So I can of course use tags, different service names or service levels. And I'll go ahead and add that device to that view. And I want to actually add maybe a host to host relationship. So I want to add the ESX hypervisor that that MySQL host sits on. So I can go ahead again, search for that, add that, and type that in. Maybe additionally, there's a few different devices we've tagged with an application name or that exists in a certain location. Maybe you want hosts that are in AWS. So I'm going to search by my AWS tag. So just search for our AWS Kubernetes tag here. I'm going to add our Nginx AWS service there from Kubernetes. And we're going to add that. And that's going to be our web service that's connecting to our MySQL host. So I've added these different elements, and I can add relationships to that. So this is our web to DB connection. And this is a host to host virtualization relationship there. So I'm just adding different contexts and relationships, and I want to highlight that each of these are these are production workloads for that application. They're all in that role, and I'm going to highlight them in red. I could also build these out based upon discovered data that uh, Device 42 has pulled in and calculate automatically in affinity groups. So affinity groups is going to automatically calculate impact and dependency groups, which we'll show in a, another overview to give more context to that. But I can use that to build out the business applications as well. So I'll go ahead and search for that affinity group for this same device. And I'll add that to this view. And now it's existing alongside the host I had added manually. So that MySQL host was part of that affinity group. It extended its relationships that it has to that affinity group I added in here. So now those that I manually mapped now coexist with the affinity group I added in, which I can modify and remove anything that might not exist here. So these are actually guests that exist and just connect to that website on that Apache host. I just want to remove them from this particular view as needed. And I can remove any lines and relationships that are no longer necessary to. And once I build that out to the liking, make any modifications to that, go back in and update it, that'll persist across uh, the data of device 42, where I can then use that in reports if I want to create a cloud recommendation engine based upon a business application or I'm pulling out software and service inventory. I just want to look at hosts of a certain business application. We can include that there.